Hey everyone, it's Demo. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to connect your PS2 controller to your Android device. And if you have any questions, please watch to the end and I'll show you how to fix common issues. But before we start, if you find this video to be useful, please do give it a big thumbs up. It helps more people find this video. This is what you'll need for the tutorial. A Sony PS3 controller, a rooted Android device, OTG adapter and USB cable combo, and lastly, the 6-axis controller app. We'll start by downloading the 6-axis app. Unfortunately, it is no longer available in the Play Store as you can see, and the website also no longer works. So we'll need to download it from a third-party website. I highly recommend using this one, as many sites out there carry viruses. You can use the link in the description. Once you're at the website, you need to scroll down and then press download, and then press start download on the next page. And then I'm going to let the download start. After downloading, go ahead and install it by pressing continue and then install and then go ahead and wait until the app finishes installing. Once that's done, go ahead and press open which will give you this screen. First, we're going to go and change IME and then click yes and then enable the 6-axis controller. Press OK. OK again. Now go ahead and press back once that's done and then we can connect our PS3 controller to our Android device using the USB cable. Next I'll connect the USB to the phone as well. Once we see the flashing lights we can go ahead and press start and the first time you do this it's going to ask you for permission so go ahead and press grant and once you're granted access the pairing process will begin and you can see a log at the bottom as it tries to interface with the controller and don't be worried if you see the error fail to configure bluetooth message just keep waiting until you see the listening for controllers message and also your bluetooth address is going to show up at the bottom and once you have that go ahead and press pair controller click on pair and then check the checkbox and then press OK. And if you've done all that correctly, you should get this master address updated message. And at this point, go ahead and disconnect your USB cable from your controller. Once that's done, now go ahead and press the PlayStation button. The lights will blink for a while until eventually it should switch to a single solid light. This will confirm that your PS3 controller is now connected to your Android device. Likewise, you can see the client one connected message on your phone too. And now I'll show you how to disconnect and turn off the 6-axis controller app. Because when you swipe away the app, you can see that it's still running when you pull down the taskbar. Now, in order to fully shut down the app, you'll need to open up the 6-axis app. And then from there, go ahead and press the stop button. And then wait, because it might take a couple of seconds for the app to fully disconnect from the controller. Now that it's disconnected, we're going to go ahead and change the IME back to the Android keyboard if it hasn't done so already. Now to reconnect your controller after the initial pairing is a lot simpler because you no longer need the USB cable. All you need to do is load up the app and then go ahead and press start. And then we're going to wait for the listening for controllers message, which will take a couple of seconds. But once you see it, you can go ahead and press the PlayStation button on your controller and it should connect automatically by itself. And you're connected. And now we're going to add touch controls. So first thing we're going to do is go over to a game you want to add touch control layer to and then we're going to do a screenshot. Also, I am aware of the cracked screen and I am sorry for that. Hopefully you can overlook that. Okay, once you grab the screenshot of the preferred game of choice, we're going to go ahead and uh, move over back to 6-axis app. And once we are back, we're going to go ahead over to settings and then we're going to touch emulation and then click on edit touch profiles and then go on allow. And then when we're at this screen, we're going to double tap the menu as it asks and then we're going to change background and then we're going to go to screenshots and then choose the screenshot we had just made. And once the background has loaded, we're going to go and double tap the screen again and then go and change background and then press the center orientation key until it's correctly oriented. Double tap the screen and now we can add the controls. I'll start with the analog controls with the left and then we're going to drag it to the left side so we can control the game and then we can enlarge it by using the outer circles. We'll add more controls. This time I'll add the right analog control. And then we're going to drop it into the right part of the screen and then we're going to extend it by dragging out the outer circles. Okay, and this will control our view or our point of view. And I'm going to make sure it's just right, like so. Now I'm going to add the next controls, press add button, and then we're going to go ahead and press this. Let me see which key I'm going to use. I'm going to cross and add it to the bottom for the special trigger. And then we're going to add another buttons and we're going to scroll down. And this time I'm going to choose the square for the reload button and then place it right over the reload key on the screen. And now I'm going to add one more button. Go ahead and add button and I'm going to scroll to see. This time I'm going to use triangle and this will be for the, um, the zoom or aim and I'm going to place that right at the corner, right corner. And now looking at the controls, I think I'm happy with it. So I'm going to double click it and then I'm going to save profile as and then you can choose any name here for your profile. I'm just going to choose something random. And once you have chosen the name, go ahead and press done and then press save. And once the profile is saved, we can go ahead and exit the settings. Go ahead and press OK and then back, back again. And now we can select our profile. And you can see the one we have just created. Go ahead and select it. Now let's go over to our chosen game. And thanks to our touch control we just created, we can now manipulate the game using our controller but using the touch screen controls. Let's let that play so we can see how that goes. 
the button that we mapped. As you can see, I'm fully working now. Triangle, zoom in, X to reload, I mean, triangle to load, and press X to turn the special power on, as you can see. And go. And just enjoy. Now I'll go over some common issues and how to fix them. One is the incompatibility with their controller. This could be due to using generic or third party controllers. So for best results, always use official Sony controllers. The second issue is your device not being rooted. The 6 axis app cannot work without a rooted device. My device as you can see is rooted with Magisk. So if your device isn't already rooted, you can use that method. And there are plenty of tutorials on YouTube to help you. The last issue could be with your Android version itself. This is because the 6 axis app was originally created for the older Android versions and since has not been updated for the new Android updates. And as far as I know, the app only seems to work until Android 8.1, which is the same across different Android OSs like Lineage or Samsung UI. So for the best results and compatibility, I recommend using an Android version up to 8.1. Okay, so I hope that helps someone who was having issues getting this app to work. If it did, please give this video a big thumbs up, it really helps the channel. 